Being an island in the, in the Caribbean, fishing is very important for us, and uh, there's a, an abundance of, of fish. You mentioned China. In China and Dominica, we have very good relations with China as well. In fact, the Chinese uh, added a number of projects uh, on island. And because we were struck by a hurricane last year, we have a number of people working in Dominica. So uh, we the government is doing now 5,000 climate resilient homes for the citizens of Dominica. Uh, because we have enough manpower to build, we have over 500 Chinese at home building. We have, uh, I think from, from Vietnam and some of the hotels, uh, we have around 300 Vietnamese building. In the Marriott Hotel, they have around uh, 250 Colombian uh, as well on part of the Marriott Hotel. Uh, so really and truly, the opportunities are in many areas of hotels at present. We uh, have application for at least easily another five, another five. Because of the, the nature of Dominica and the pristine beauty, the high-end tourists, Marriott's building, Hilton's building, Four Seasons uh, have, uh, in Dominica uh, a few months ago. They too wants to do a hotel in Dominica. Uh, pack higher uh, luxury chains because uh, Dominica offers a kind of product that's very scarce in the world. Uh, High-end luxury tourism in tune uh, with, with nature. Dominica has what is one of the islands of Opelia. And then it was enough time that you go out to the whale watching you up your sea whales. Uh, scuba diving. Uh, we have the second largest. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Detailed uh, background about Dominica and uh, the type of investments which are available uh, there. I would uh, now request to open to question answer session. If someone needs to ask any questions, I would suggest first you introduce yourself and uh, ask uh, permission from the president and uh, place your question. Thank you. Yes, if you if you want to also say something and maybe introduce your project as well. Um, good day, everyone. As well, uh, my name is Ian Edwards. Uh, I'm one of the developers uh, for one of the resorts on Dominica, and that one will be called Tranquility Beach, Curio or Collection by Hilton. And um, just wanted to answer one of the first questions that uh, the President uh, Ahmad asked about the islands. In terms of how many islands make up the West Indies, it's uh, about 24 islands that make up the um, West Indies, but we also have about 220 to, to about 300 keys. Those are little islands that Many of big investors, uh, for instance, one of the gentlemen who, who owns Virgin Airline uh, actually owns one of those islands, and many other big in, um, moguls around the world. Uh, so there, there, there are a lot of islands, um, you know, that, that one can tap, that one can tap into. And also just to expand a little bit as well on what His Excellency said about water, uh, there's actually a study because I'm close to this program. Um, that, that shows by 2050, water, it probably is already, but water will be the most expensive commodity, even more than gas, um, yeah, you, know, you know, by that time. So just wanted to expand a little bit on that. In terms of what we, uh, we, we are here for, we are not just here um, to sell our, our program, but I was very interested in, in coming here, because this is my second visit, actually, and the first time I came here, I realized there, there are a lot of resources that we can tap into here. There are people who introduced themselves, actually, when I met them through Asan, because Asan is who I work with here, a very close relationship with. He's the one who invited us here. And based on what we were trying to sell, we realized that there's a two-way street that things could work out in terms of we sell citizenship, but also there's a lot of things we can accomplish from just by being here. Uh, for instance, we met um, two gentlemen thus far that are big in textiles, um, and they sell to the hotels. But here has about 11 hotels. Well, in Lahore, I think he was saying, they don't have many hotels. So they're looking for the opportunities. We have hundreds of, of, of hotels because the islands are, are big in tourism, and all the big brands are on the island. Dominica alone attracts 400, um, uh, you know, 400,000 um, um, tourists um, per annum, and that's just by cruise ship. Also another 200,000 per annum stay over tourists. So in terms of hotels, 
and in terms of textiles, that's something we really want to look into. And as a developer who has done many different um, development in the region, that's something I would definitely want to um, I'm look into. I realize uh, Mr. Rafat here also deals with that, so I would definitely want to email you as well. Uh, yesterday, we had a meeting with um, um, Mughal Steel, and um, someone else here, I think, has a company as well, too, that deals with steel. Steel is something that we would definitely be interested in. Uh, most of our steel actually comes from Turkey, um, you, know, you know, for the islands. Um, so that's another big thing that I would definitely want to tap into. Labor, like um, His Excellency uh, mentioned, there's a gentleman we met yesterday who came to us interested in, let's say, having second, second citizenship, but he also provides a huge amount of labor to many folks, um, and, and he is looking at that opportunity as well. And I would want to talk to him for sure, because on the islands, there's what we call a labor shortage. We don't have enough labor on islands. Um, so from time to time, we bring in big companies um, to do those projects. Um, just a few years ago, we had 500 um, people from um, India that did a, a, you know, you know, a huge project on one of the islands that I was involved with. Um, another company that um, I'm very interested to meet, actually they're sending some brochures. I think Mr. Tahir here. here um, Jamal Pipe. Jamal Pipe. Also, plastic. plastic. So that's something we order a lot of as well. And I'm looking forward to hearing the, hearing the prices. And as long as the prices work with Mr. Tahir's logistics, because logistics is always a headache yes. in terms of getting things to the island, but I, I, I believe Mr. Tahir has the right connections and the way about as to how to get the product to us. A lot of product goes through the U.S. down to us, but we believe sometimes they could come directly. That would help us, that would help, help us out as well. I did not know about the cement. And I just got to know that right now, which is very, very interesting to us as well. We order everything on the island, right? Uh, there's nothing, <laughs> hardly anything we don't order. Uh, though, yes, we have good soil, we have good food and everything else, water in abundance. But mostly everything else has to be imported. So cement is something I would definitely, if you could introduce me to, to, you know, to who the big companies are, that is something, as long as the logistics work and freight, Cost, I believe that's something we would definitely be interested in. And when I'm here speaking as a developer, I don't just speak about me. I'm not just introducing myself, but I have many other developers <coughs> who are friends and many other companies that I do buy from that I can introduce them to you guys and maybe there, there could be some sort of um, collaboration. So for me, it's not just about um, getting investors from here, but also forming that partnership, that relationship that um, that could kind of form a bond between you know between all of us here between Pakistan and um, our island of, of 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 Dominica. So please, uh, if if you if you could invest in our in our program, that would make you as well a Dominican. And once you become a Dominican, you now have access to everywhere else. Because the first time you visit, they will say to you, "Welcome home." Though it's your first time to the island, but because you have that passport, welcome home. And not just welcome home to Dominica, but welcome to all the Caricom Islands, like His Excellency said, South America as well, you have access to that, where you know, you know the population there is very, very, very big. So I think that there could be a good um, collaboration between us. So thank you for having us, and um, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I think uh, one other... Uh, industry which can be suitable for you as well as marble industry. Marble is being exported uh, outside of Pakistan, everywhere in the world, so maybe you can uh, tap that as well. Yes, that would be good. It, uh, uh, get a detail on how to, what are the terms and conditions of uh, being eligible or being uh, uh, being processed as a citizen, getting a citizen of Dominica, so how much you need to invest for how many years, if you can get an outline on, I think our members would uh, would be interested in what's the procedure yes. and how you go about it. Well, I think Mr. Nansen, yes, His Excellency Nansen. Yes, uh, under the program in Dominica, there are two ways somebody could invest uh, to be a citizen. One is what you call a direct government fund, 
and there is basically uh, you you pay the government uh, a, 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 an amount for a single individual is hundred thousand US dollars plus uh, different fees for due diligence etc. For a husband and wife it would be hundred seventy five thousand dollars and up to two children it would be uh, two hundred thousand dollars for husband and wife and up to two children or two dependents. Dependents would be uh, children up to thirty depending on the parents. Or it could be your parents once they are uh, above 55, or uh, your in-laws would qualify uh, as well as dependents, and that is the government fund. For anybody uh, above four, a uh, further twenty-five thousand dollars. For an investment in a private project, it's a minimum of two hundred thousand dollars, and for a family of up to six, it would be an additional thirty-five thousand dollars. So. Uh, Really and truly, for a single person, it's easier doing the government fund, uh, but you get nothing as for that besides being, being a citizen. If you invest in uh, Mr. Edward's project, you, you actually buy shares in, in a world brand, and you qualify to be a citizen. Uh, so that would be $200,000. We do not accept your money up front as a program. We uh, ask you to pay your processing and due diligence fees, that's about ten thousand uh, dollars for the projects. Uh, they ask for ten percent, so to ensure that you not uh, let them waste too much of the time. But when, when once we get uh, the money from you, we employ due diligence. There are three phases to our due diligence because that's very important for our, for our, our, our project to ensure that the integrity of the program is always well well kept. We do not accept in, uh, investors directly ourselves. They must go through an approved agent. The agent is expected to know the person who is who is recommending, so he has to do background checks uh, on the person who he's checking. That's the first line of due diligence. If an agent brings in too many bad clients, we'll take him off uh, from all this. The second line of due diligence, once we get the application, we have what we call the intelligence in our police department, that is linked to our regional security in the Caribbean. So our regional security runs every name against uh, the regional files. And they are linked with uh, the other international intelligence uh, agencies around the world. So those names go through all those lists to ensure that these people are not wanted or being searched at uh, anything or anywhere. And if somebody uh, on the list becomes a citizen and in the future they get on the list, then the regional security will let us know that this person uh, who applied to your program uh, is no, has created the interest on international uh, intelligence. After, we also at the same time send uh, the names and the file of the individual to one of four judicious firms that will do a thorough background check on the individual's first. It will tell us who the person is, where you went to school, they will assess uh, uh, your work look at, at the reports on you and we do both side of check so they will come in uh, ask questions in the community where you work where you operate in the industry where you work get feedback from the people uh, who to get what kind of preparation you have in the industry whether it is in steel or whether it is in farming or whether it is in manufacturing or law or whatever uh, we will get that kind of, of information we will get pictures uh, of the offices where you work they will necessarily come and then tell you I'm here but the intelligence people will come in and do checks, give us pictures of where, of where your house is. And we keep all those things on the file and we assess all, uh, all those things there. They, uh, we do a risk check for money laundering. If you say, uh, my income is $200,000 a year, we ask you to provide us with, with bank statements for two years. So if your statement is showing well, over the last two years, you have uh, $4 million going into your account, but you, you, your source of funds declares two hundred thousand dollars. We want to know what's that? What's the one? What are where? Where's the rest of the money coming from? We have to ensure that, that we risk out our corruption, money laundering. Those things are, are not accessible. So we we check uh, on those things. There. So the more accurate you give your information, is the better for us. When the files come back to us in our, our office, they are scored. They are, they are scored points are assigned for every sector and uh, when, once that's done I would go through the final report and I would recommend to the Honorable Prime Minister to approve the person as a citizen or disapprove. Okay. Yeah? Okay. When, you, you, when you approve 
You're given a letter to say that you approve. Uh, the fees that you have to pay would be X, Y, Z, 100, 200, or whatever thousand dollars on the family, and the money should be paid at X, Y, Z uh, account. So we provide that, and then you pay. And once you pay the money, because the money gets into the account, we have proof of the money in the account. We issue uh, the investor with a certificate of naturalization, and that's what makes you a Dominican. That certificate is used by your agent to apply for a passport for you through our immigration department because you're a Dominican. So the unit doesn't, doesn't uh, deal with passports. We do not give any investor passports. But we give a certificate of naturalization. And then your agent will apply through the immigration department who will issue you a passport. That will take about a week uh, to get the passport. Generally speaking, we tend to approve the unit, uh, your citizenship within a 90-day period. It would, of course, take your agent more time to get all the information that, that you would require. But once you put in the information and we get the application, we would normally tend to approve and disapprove uh, in 19, uh, within 90 days. Okay, thank you. Anybody, please? Thank you, Dinesh. Uh, my name is Arif Ansari. I'm uh, already introduced. I'm representing the Hoche of Commerce as well right now. So I, I don't, uh, the most usable in the island is our cotton, towels, bathrobes, carpet, and uh, furniture as well. So I request you to go to Mr. President as well. We can uh, meet a, uh, we already uh, go through the steam line, the meeting as well. And Mr. S. Arnold, my friend, he is already taking uh, some samples from there for the uh, uh, recording over here. So this is a good sign, I think so. so yes. Welcome to uh, Iron and uh, North as well for both players, both sides. So you're most welcome. Thank you very much thank for uh, your hospitality over here. That's why thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. We import a lot of goods from, from Southeast Asia and China. And in fact, it is, it, when you look at the, at the cost of, of shipping, it's cheaper to bring a container out of China than it is out of Florida. Yeah, yeah. All of Florida is so much closer. closer yeah. uh, uh, and we import a lot out of Dubai. Dubai, Dubai uh, the cost of a container from the Dubai to the Caribbean is the same as the, as the cost from uh, Miami to the Caribbean. Yeah. So, so really and truly, we bring in uh, fertilizer out of Morocco uh, in Dominica because we, we do a, a, a lot of agriculture. We produce a lot of food that we export to the other Caribbean islands. Uh, we bring a floor fertilizer out of, out of uh, Morocco. In, in Dominica, cement comes in, cement comes in into the Caribbean on a regular basis. But the cement boat comes into Dominica every single week. So every single week, the cement boat comes into Dominica. And for the last three years, uh, we have had a regular cement shortages. Because there is uh, a there's tremendous construction going uh, taking place on island. So uh, our, our consumption of cement uh, is tremendous. I recall speaking to a friend of mine who is himself in business, and he was he, uh, he was telling that tropical shipping, which is one of the major shipping firms uh, in the Caribbean area, was telling that every every uh, boat they had was overbooked on a regular enough basis. So, yeah. Mr. Chaudhary, you see, sir. My name is Jerry Masir Ahmadai. Basically, I'm a developer in Islamabad, many luxury and commercial apartment buildings. And, uh, and also, I uh, have a 200-bed hospital. Uh, can anybody uh, buy a land in Dominica and develop the projects and uh, any former, former nationals is buying them? Yeah. Yes, uh, land. Anybody can buy land in Dominica, whether you're a foreigner or not. If you're a foreigner, then you would have to uh, get a, a foreign land holder's uh, certificate, so you have to apply for that to buy land. If you're a Dominican, then you buy land in a way. Uh, most of the land is privately owned, so you would, it's easy to, to uh, buy land. Uh, in terms of development, the government allows a uh, fiscal incentive 20, some, sometimes 25 years, uh, full fiscal uh, non-tax uh, to, to uh, investors who are willing to invest, we do not tax you on the on your international uh, income. We do the tax on on the local local earnings. 
So that's part of what we want. What type of scope are there in developer land and apartments type apartments there and sale internationally is possible there? In, in buy a land and develop apartment buildings in Dominica and sell everyone's in international. Definitely, de definitely. Uh, so that that is uh, very common. So it's possible you could build and sell. There, there's a demand for people wanting luxurious homes in, in the Caribbean, a small island, beautiful backdrop. In fact, I was telling uh, as I last time when we were driving up to. The, the restaurant on the hill. At Mona, I was telling uh, uh, Asa, but I can drive here now because that, like, that's Dominica. <laughs> so, really, uh, the road there, and Asa was in Dominica just uh, just last month. Mm -hmm. I was telling Asa, but I could drive here now. I could drive here better than you because that's driving in Dominica. So, uh, we have the kind of backdrop, and uh, where you see the sea from from all around, it's quite, quite beautiful. So, the people love that kind of thing, so uh, it's very possible. Uh, excuse me, uh, sorry, uh, I told you. As far as the hospital is concerned, they are also going to launch a hospital in uh, Dominica. So we can send from here surgical goods as well. Yeah. From here, yeah. we have a uh, best quality surgical goods and cutlery as well. Spinners is from uh, Maziabad and Shalkot. So we can uh, target as well. Yeah. And you can target as well the hospital over there. Yeah. Yes, thank you. So, uh, if you, so if, if, for example, if Chaudhary Nisisa invests in his own land in Dominica, buys his own land to make a project, will that be a private land or will that be a government private partnership and will it be eligible for the citizenship program as well if he owns that private land? It would be a private land. Uh, the projects themselves are privately owned. As I, as I mentioned before, the government take no share in those uh, developments, but uh, you cannot just go and buy land and and do the project. If you want people, if people are going to apply to on who invest in project are going to be citizens, and you have to apply to the government. Say so, uh, we are interested in doing this project. We have a market of X Y Z. That's what we are interested in doing. Would you approve it as a project uh, for citizenship? Then the committee of the government would look at the project would make assessments of whether it would is beneficial to the country. If they are, if they are uh, uh, agree it is, then it would be approved, and then anybody who invests in the project would themselves be Dominican citizens. Yeah. But uh, the projects are fully owned, private sector, and the government will not take your property. We will not, uh, part, we will not uh, accept shares in property. We will help you to uh, attract investors. So Mr. Edwards is doing his project. He said, Mr. Anton, you're the government. I would like your help uh, in promoting my project. Can you come to Pakistan with me? I said, sure. What time? When? And you don't have to pay me to do it. I will come as government to give you support. So I'm here with him, giving him support. Uh, because it brings in benefit to the country as well. We have assessed his project, and we, and we found his project to be one that is worthy uh, of national development. So we support. It's your project. The investors, it's owned by the investors. The investments are theirs, 100%. If the government are uh, coming to take your property at any one time, it's because it, it's property might be used, needed for national development or, or a national project. Obviously, we're interested in doing that for a national purpose. Yeah, our reason. That is the cost value. Can we buy it? We pay and we pay your assets for it. Yeah. Mention about that yeah, uh, in fact, he has to mention medical. In, uh, and now, Ross became the largest offshore medical school in the world. And that medical school provided uh, for the US more doctors than any other medical school anywhere in the world, including only all the medical schools in the US itself. So Dominica provided more doctors for the US than anywhere else from Ross University. Unfortunately, last year we had uh, a hurricane. Of course, Dr. Robert Ross died. Uh, before he died, he sold, uh, he sold the, the school because it was very profitable. He sold it, the owners he bought sold, who sold, who sold. Uh, so it was bought by Divine University about three years ago. And uh, that campus in Dominica was the most profitable campus for Divine worldwide of all the 27 uh, university campuses around the world. 
unfortunately, we had a very huge hurricane last year in Dominica, and the school moved to Barbados. So uh, they were operating on the lands that were released by Dominica. So the lands actually, uh, the government property, the buildings are, are there, and we're looking for for investors in, to put in the school there. It is ideal for medical school, uh, but other schools are also welcome to look at it. Uh, in Dominica, we had a, we had it is allowed uh, Domi uh, Dominic, accredited to Dominica, allowed Dominica, or students going to medical school in Dominica, to uh, gain financial aid as if you were, you were in the, doing it in the U.S. So uh, a lot of American students would come in, get get the loans from the American government, and come and do their studies in Dominica, and go back and work uh, in the U.S. So so we had that unique opportunity that that uh, that is still there. Uh, as, a, as a tourist, uh, I I haven't checked uh, on, before I came. I haven't checked with our foreign uh, our foreign ministry on uh, the visa requirement, but I'm sure it's quite simple. If I saw you in Dominica. How did you, did you get your visa? Actually, I had a UK and US visa, so I didn't have an issue, and I got an on arrival visa. So if you have a UK so and valid Pakistani US visa, Pakistani passport. Uh, I have on arrival visa, but you have like a UK, UK and US visa, then you don't need, I think. Something like that. But if somebody wants to travel, so he can he could arrange the visa. Visa on arrival. Visa on arrival. Amir Pizza, that's a multi question. My, my, my name is Amir Pizza, I am a director member. My question is the religious point of view. The, what about the mosque there in Islamic for the Muslim population? population? Um, Dominica is a, a predominantly Catholic country. Uh, we have uh, a few Muslims uh, in Dominica, and we have at least one mosque. It, it's uh, in Portsmouth, the town where I am. So, so I've got a couple of suggestions uh, for your kind consultation. First of all, uh, we would like to thank you for coming to Islam the Chamber of Commerce and giving a very detailed uh, briefing about the different investment opportunities uh, in the Dominican region. Uh, you know that uh, we don't have uh, uh, a good number of our members uh, who, are, uh, who can uh, listen about the investment opportunities which you have briefed us about. My first suggestion is that uh, whenever a delegation is planned and uh, they visit a different organization, uh, we must have a complete information about the objectives of the delegation that visit uh, to any organization. Uh, we've been asking about the information, what is uh, the basic objective of uh, the visit, uh, but we couldn't get it. Uh, my first, uh, uh, the other suggestion is that uh, since uh, you have given uh, a very useful information for investment in your country, I would appreciate if you could send us through email complete information about uh, the, the laws, regulations, that how uh, the investors can invest in the country in different sectors, and uh, what are the products that can be uh, imported by your country. Uh, this we will share with our members so that they could know uh, about uh, the opportunities and that would be yeah. another opportunity you should come and that you should uh, uh, invest in our country. The other thing is that uh, you should also send us the complete information about the citizenship, the, the rules and regulations, which uh, we will pass on to our members. The other way that can be considered uh, is uh, the IT sector, uh, I, because in Pakistan it's a growing sector and we can export different products to your country uh, in, in the services sector. These are just my suggestions, and uh, uh, I thank you again for visiting us. And uh, uh, and uh, we are also glad to see a very good model of public uh, and uh, private sector model, because uh, uh, the, uh, you are from the government and he's from the uh, private sector, and that model is very good. So that uh, that shows the the trust of each other, and this also gives us the confidence uh, to invest uh, in your country. We are promoting uh, this program with them. Uh, as you have given us some suggestions, so they have discussed uh, like a different trade than trust in mutual like a sectors like a sports and uh, cement and steel and all these things. So we are trying to like a build a positive image of Pakistan uh, in abroad. As you know, the people uh, doesn't want to come here because of the situation of Pakistan, but. Uh, you know, health, uh, peace and all these things. So we are trying to uh, give them a positive image that you should come here in Pakistan even as uh, they are promoting their programs, but we are trying to build a relationship for mutual interest. So uh, the program, uh, as uh, as you said, mentioned, the program is very good and uh, you, you get a lot of benefits through this program. Like if you have the citizenship of uh, Dominica, 
so you can have access the European market, uh, UK market. You can have access 100 more than 135 countries. You can go. You can have opportunities. Even you can uh, export your products over there. And with the Pakistani passport, we don't have like this access. You have to get appointments. You have to go and you have to follow their uh, schedules. You don't uh, have your own schedule. So there are a lot of opportunities if you get their citizenship and you can go there. There are they don't manufacture anything. We manufacture a lot of uh, like a goods, so we can export. As he mentions, that's not only one island; it's a community, Caribbean community. So there, there are 12 million people are living there. So you, can, once you have the citizenship of uh, uh, Dominica, you have a citizenship of 12 million. You're representing a 12 million people. So you can export your goods. You can do business with the 12 million people. So there is a huge opportunities if uh, we are inviting these uh, delegation, these kind of delegation, we can have the, a discussion with them. And we have arranging uh, one event, uh, we have arranged one event in Lahore, uh, and we are arranging one event in Marriott today from 2 o'clock to 5 o'clock. And we are just giving all these information to the people, and we are guiding them, so how this program will going on. And we are also like uh, arranging their meeting with the different uh, uh, business uh, uh, sector people. We had a meeting with the Chen one yesterday, we had a meeting with the Governor Punjab, we had a meeting with the uh, Mughal Steels. So they are uh, looking forward to uh, have a business with Pakistani community. So this is a very positive like a sign and that we are uh, trying and there's a Chamber of Commerce is a very good platform. This is trying to build a very positive image of Pakistan. That, that's uh, what we can do a better like a trade and business. Uh, right now, you know, this is a very important for us that we have to give them a positive. There is a peaceful country. You can come here. There is a lot of opportunities. Thank you. My friend left uh, forget one thing. Uh, yesterday we was with uh, Mr. Subhan. He organized the meeting with the Pakistan Cricket Board. CEO. And he is wearing uh, right now the Pakistan Cricket Board ties. Right now they are <laughs> So they they are also Mr. Subhan also asking the sports goods. They need to the sports goods over there. Um, everything in yes. you know Pakistan Cricket Board is a huge platform for the sports goods. So uh, this is uh, on the way, all these things, you yeah. know, so we can do it. Okay, we're visiting Islamabad Chamber of Commerce. And uh, one point which I would take from this meeting is that uh, Pakistan has also a lot of potential. Yeah. And uh, I, my, my stress would be that uh, uh, hospitality business is booming over here yeah. as well. Real estate yeah. is booming here as well. Uh, shortage of uh, medical institutes are is, is here as well. So my recommendation would be that the Caribbean island should also look into investing into uh, Pakistani businesses or Pakistani uh, joint ventures. And we have a lot of uh, uh, good companies over here uh, which which can have a fruitful income for both uh, the Dominican people and the Pakistani people. So investing in Pakistan should also uh, be on the priority list. Yeah, uh, let me just say that uh, Mr. Edwards in fact, he was discussing with uh, a, a gentleman he met here who is looking at, at doing a, a Hilton Hotel. There's unit hotels here as well. Uh, Ian is doing a Hilton Hotel. His partners uh, own how many Hilton Hotels? Three. Uh, he, his partners are working with him own three Hilton Hotels. He also has been involved in many different developments. In Pakistan and the West Indies, our main sport <coughs> is uh, cricket. In the US, it's uh, basketball. And the most popular basketballer is LeBron James. Yeah. Yes. After the NBA Finals uh, last year, LeBron took his entire family to one of, me, of Ian's property mm -hmm. and uh, took his, his brick, his post-NBA brick uh, at LeBron's uh, on uh, Ian's property. So, so uh, he, he is well known, uh, he, he has uh, very good uh, property instincts and, uh, and his properties themselves are very well recognized. So he's looking and discussing with, uh, with a uh, gentleman here who is a developer himself who wants to get a, a brand hotel. And Ian is discussing with him. should uh, result in some fruitful activity for both countries. And uh, wish you all the best in your endeavors in the future. And thank you very much for coming today. Thank you. Thank now, uh, Mr. Oh. President, uh, we'll uh, give you the Islamabad Chamber's insignia as a token of appreciation of intending. I came today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.